And if, and if I'm allowed to this coming week, I'm going to give you a little side note here this coming week. I'm going to be teaching a, and sharing a, a word on Thursday about how God doesn't need a backup. In other words, he doesn't need a co-signer. Amen? Amen. Amen. And right here, Peter proved his faith in Jesus. Peter proved that, that, listen, that, that his instinct, his instinct was to rely on Jesus. Jesus, you called me out here. Jesus, wait a minute. Have you ever heard this? What God brings you through or to? He'll bring you through. Amen. So the song of motions and, uh, ocean encourages us to learn from Peter's experience and to keep our eyes above the waves. Fix our eyes upon Jesus. And that is, keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Turn your eyes up on Jesus. Did we just say that? Does that song speak to you or not? Verse 2. It continues with the walking on the water. Listen to what it says in verse 2. Your grace abounds in the deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. So Peter experienced God's grace with Jesus. Amen. Here he is. He's in the deepest water. Jesus held out his sovereign hand to rescue him. Now you might remember from, uh, from a few weeks ago uh, that, that, about God's sovereignty and how it re refers to his supreme power, how it refers to his ultimate authority over everything in the world. Amen? I wish I, wish I could, uh, I had the, the, song, the music from Through It All. I've learned to trust in Jesus, learned to trust in God, through it all. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon. But you see, it wasn't just Peter that experienced God's grace out on that lake. I mean, it seems to be he's the focal point of the story. But did you know that the other disciples received the grace or the gift, I could say, of seeing Jesus calm the waters. Yes. Amen. When he gets into the boat, things change within the presence of Jehovah. Amen. He gets into their boat. He gets into their circumstances. This revealed to them that Jesus, in fact, was sovereign over creation. How do we learn? How do we hear from God? Through creation. How do we learn? How do we hear from God? Through the Bible. Amen? The person of Christ in us. The spirit of Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. So verse 2 of that psalm also reminds us that even though the feet of our faith may fail, and fear sometimes does get the best of us. Can I get an amen on that one? Amen. Jesus never fails us. Amen. He never lets us down. Jesus, his faithfulness, oh, did you know that his faithfulness that does not depend on us? Jesus is faithful because he is the son of God and God is faithful. Now God's grace and his faithfulness is it's pretty deep. It's, it, it's abundant. There, there's a, a, an ample supply of it as the water of the oceans represent. Think about this for a minute. The waters of the oceans, how vast, how deep and wide the love of the Father has for us. Amen? Amen. Deep and wide, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Jesus will never fail us. This means that we are not condemned just because we stumble on our faith through, as we're walking through our faith. You know, Jesus says, if you, if, if, listen, when you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm telling you this morning? Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what the Word of God is saying to you? And apparently, He expects that we're going to trip. And apparently, He expects that we're going to be a little bit like Peter and we're going to take our eyes up off Him from time to time. And, but the idea is that we can still turn and look to Jesus because He's looking for us. Amen. Whether Peter should have got out of the boat on that occasion is not beside the point. It is the point. 
The fact is that he did get out of that and he did boat and he did walk on that water for just a little bit. So don't be too hard on the guy. When's the last time you walked on water? Amen. <laughs> and although he took his eyes off Jesus and he started to sink, watch this. He took his eyes off Jesus. He began to sink and he said, Jesus, save me. Get this, that's not the end of the story. Just because he failed, just because he tripped, just because he stumbled. I gotta find my soundtrack, Brother Mike, from DC Talk. What if I stumble? What if I fall? What if I lose my step and I make fools of us all? Will the love continue when my walk becomes a crawl? What if I stumble? And what if I fall? See, the fact is, he did get out of the boat. The fact is, he did lose sight of Jesus. The fact is, he did begin to sink. The fact is, he cried out to Jesus. The fact is that Jesus saved him. Amen. Somebody should want to get up and run the aisles this morning. Amen. God's grace. Paul was told by God, my grace is sufficient. God's grace was sufficient for Peter. God's grace is sufficient for you and me too. So if we fail, if we, listen, don't give up, don't lay out, don't fall back, reach out to Jesus. Because if we ask Jesus' help, you know what, oh, I gotta give you this. If you ask for Jesus' help, you're gonna learn from experience. Well, what experience is that? Well, yeah, most of us, we think about the experience we learned from the bad things, the mistakes we made. How many of you know it's okay as long as you learn from the mistake, right? But what if we started learning from the fact that I made a mistake, but Jesus saved me anyway? Amen. Because we need to understand the significance of the song and that next line that talks about this. I am yours and you are mine. Let's go back to the chorus again. Then the second half reads this. When all should rise, my soul will be, it will rest in your embrace. For I am yours. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read it again. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours and you are mine. Step out on the water with me just for a moment, can you? We're out there on the water. You're there with Peter. Peter has now, he's sinking and he's sinking fast. But he thinks quick. His, his, watch this. His spirit is quickened, if you will. His faith is, has been, he's been reminded of the faith that he should have in Jesus. And he immediately cries out, Jesus, save me. And what do you see happen there? I don't, I don't see Jesus yanking him up out of the boat, tossing him, or out of the water, tossing him into the boat. I don't see that. By all intents and purposes, we see Peter resting in the arms of Jesus. Amen. Jesus lifted him up out of that water. Amen. And held right there, they're locked, they're locked together, and he walks him back over, and he puts him back in the boat. But the lines make other connections as well. Watch this. When the ocean rises, it makes me think of global warming and the way the, listen, the world's oceans are literally rising due to the melting glaciers. Amen? Amen? You know, our world is a little bit anxious about all that. Probably rightfully so. Do any of us really know what the future will hold in regards to that? Is there anything, I mean, think about this. Our world is anxious about the ecological crises that we're facing. And as Christians, though we find our security in God, we do what we can to stem the tide and to trust, or to, to entrust ourselves to him. Listen to this. My soul will rise in your embrace. My soul, my soul will rise in and you're right. Peter on the wall, but he walked out on the water, and then God, Jesus raises him up and embraces him. My soul will rest in your embrace. Psalm 131, verse 2 reads like this. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. 
My soul is like a weaned child that is within me. 